Hello friends, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. Back in the garage, this time to review a product that I think is truly in a league of its own. I don't necessarily mean that in quality, but I mean that in the versatility that can be done on this. This is gonna be probably a little bit of a longer review. Reason being, there is so much that this thing can do and I wanna go through all of it. This is the Bulletproof Isolator. It allows you to do what many people do in a commercial gym, now being able to do that in your home gym. <laughs> Let's get into it. Okay, so the Bulletproof Isolator has been teased for some time. I initially saw it on Instagram and I've just seen it all throughout. We've now had it in, been able to test it, compare it to some other options that are out there. I'm gonna give my full, in-depth, honest review. Now before I get into it, first off, Bulletproof sent this free of charge for a review. This is gonna be an honest take. There are some things I absolutely love about this. There's also some things that I really don't love. If you'd like to purchase it, I'll put a link below like button to the product where if you go there purchase it the company will pay us a small commission doesn't increase the cost you pay but does allow us to continue doing these awesome videos okay before I get into the review on the design the construction just everything it can do I want to first show you in some beautiful 4k footage what exactly you can do with this bad boy hold on to your butts Okay, so as you can see, there is a lot you can do with the isolator. Honestly, for home gym owners, it's kind of a dream because many home gym owners love to tinker and love to play with all the different toys that they have in the garage gym. And this is a toy that honestly probably has more adjustability and more potential versatility than just about any other that's out there. Now that produces some both positives and potential problems. But first and foremost, I wanna talk about the design and kind of how it works. Okay, from the start, I think this is an extremely smart design that is obviously from somebody that trains. Sometimes when I review products, you get things in. There's some companies I'm specifically thinking in my mind, I won't name them, but the, the products come in and it's like, man, this was not designed by somebody who's ever lifted a weight in their life. You know, there are people at these companies, they're commercially oriented. They're trying to make more money for them companies. And then you have people that really are passionate and into the thing. Like it's people that really lift and they're like, man, I wanna start a home gym. This isn't meeting my needs. How can I create something that would allow this product to meet my needs and then maybe I can sell it and make money on it? This is that company, this is that product. This is a product from somebody, I mean, look at this guy. <laughs> this dude obviously has lifted a lot of weight in his life, obviously does a lot of bodybuilding, and this is a product that is designed specifically for bodybuilding. Now, if you're not a bodybuilder, that doesn't mean you're not gonna use this, but this is designed to mimic and do a lot of the movements that you find on machines that cost thousands of dollars, take up a ton of space, and really just aren't practical for home gym owners. This is great for people that are going from a commercial gym, they're like, man, I wish I had the ability to use my, this preacher curl machine, or this leg extension machine, or this ham curl machine in my home gym, this allows you to do that. Now, I'm not gonna detail every movement that you can do with this. You saw quite a few in the beginning, and so you can see there's just a lot of things you can do with it. Now, here's kind of what comes with the isolator. They sell some of these parts separate. Most of you, if you're looking at this and you're wanting to buy it, really what you're probably gonna get is just the whole package. And the whole package of the isolator comes with the carriage system that you see that attaches to a squat rack upright, also comes with the two leverage arms. One's a weight arm, one's a leverage arm. It comes with a long roller pad, comes with a short roller pad, and also comes with a handle system that allows you to use it for preacher curls and poles and things like that. And then lastly, it does come with a weight plate holder. That, that is what you add the resistance on. It allows you to use it in multiple angles. First, I wanna talk about what it's designed to be used on. This is not a freestanding unit. If you don't have a squat rack, you don't have some sort of upright to use it on, you can't use it. 
Okay, it's an attachment. It's designed to be a rack attachment, but it's designed to be pretty much universal, which has positives and negatives. So the positive is it's designed for three by three, two by three, or two by two racks. And also has the ability for you to purchase pins that work for a one inch hole rack, which is what this is on and what I think would be the best, or three quarter inch, half inch, 5 8 inch, or even an 11 16 inch. So this company made this so that it could be used pretty much universal. And one of the ways that they're able to do that is they're using pins to secure it against the upright. So kind of outside of the modular pieces that I talked about, like the rollers, there's a carriage system that sits up against the upright and has a roller on the back. You then have these pressure pins on each side that you screw to push UHMW plastic up against the upright so it's secure against the upright. This is both good and kind of bad. The good side is it can work on most uprights. So if you have a three by three or something from a company that says it's three by three, when in reality, they're just kind of rounding up. It's more like 70 millimeters times 70 millimeters, which would be many of the racks that are imported. It will work just as well on both of those. The problem is that we found the locking pins on each side are not good. This is part of the product that has to be improved. I want to call it out. We actually, in trying to tighten these, actually ripped the plastic knobs off of the threads and then had to get pliers to grab the threads and then spin it with a separate tool. Like, it's just not ideal. I think this is something that they could easily fix. They just need some quality control. I haven't actually seen a ton of this online, so it may just be unique to the one that we've got, but it was on multiple screws. It's just kind of annoying. But once it's attached, it is very stable against the upright very stable against the upright. The only thing you have to watch out for in the stability is how stable your squat rack is. That's one of the things you have to watch out for because if your squat rack is either not bolted down or not weighted down a ton, when you put a ton of weight on this and you're doing leg extensions, leg curls, all those sorts of things, it can start to wobble a little bit. Not wobble against the upright, but the actual rack wobbling because with your amount of weight sitting off the rack introduces a lot of leverage and therefore with a lot of leverage can introduce play in the upright. So just something to be aware of. Now, the main design of this has one weight arm and one leverage arm. The leverage arm is what you're often pushing or pulling against, and the weight arm is what's providing the resistance. The way that they're able to do this and make it extremely versatile is they have these circular plates that then the pads or the leverage arm is able to move up against in 360 degrees and then lock in. This therefore allows you to just use it for any body type pretty much, for any type of movement you're wanting to do from leg extensions to leg curls and all those sorts of things and do it very seamlessly. This is like, I think the genius part of the system is that it's just incredibly versatile and incredibly adjustable. Honestly, in some cases, it's almost too adjustable and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, one of the unique designs of this, and one thing I really wanna call out, because I think it's very smart, is the way the pads or the attachments attach to the actual carriage unit. They have that hex head on the end, there's then a rod that's running through the pads, and then there's bearings that are holding that rod on. So the, the spin of these is extremely smooth, particularly the ones like the rotating handles. Those are the ones using the bearings, whereas the leg rollers are using more PVC attached onto a rod. They spin very well. I just think like this was an area that I think they could have overlooked and made it much cheaper to increase their margins, but the handles with the bearings, it's just a very smooth rotation. So I'm glad they put extra thought into things like that. But the way they attach is using these pop pins. There's these plastic pop pins that screw on, screw off, and then pull. That allows you to insert them in there pretty quickly and in so many different ports that are on the machine and being able to use it on multiple sides of the upright. This is a cool idea, but allows you to use the pads and to use the rollers and to use the handles in just about any of the ports because it's the same size on all of them. The other thing this allows them to do is to kind of future-proof it. So in the future, they can come out with other attachments if they would like to, or if people request them, that would work in the same ports that the attachments they send with the product also work now. Now, the other thing with the design is it's plate loaded. I think this is a great decision. I don't really know how you'd add a stack to this anyways, but the ability to add plates means that home gym owners can use the plates, the resistance they've already got, and attach them on here. The plates are long enough, I think, to get heavy enough for a majority of you that are out there. The thing I would call out is if you're using black bumper plates, 
for some movements, you may not be able to get as heavy as you'd like. You may run, run out of space. I will say though, if you're really wanting to get heavy with this, if you have calibrated plates, I don't think you're ever really gonna max out the machine. Like you're gonna be able to use as much weight as you wanna use on this and still have space on the weight plate holder. The other thing with the weight plate holder, and again to the modularity, cause this is just, it's ridiculous. This is very well thought through, is the weight plate holder can attach on both sides of the weight arm. So it can attach facing upwards or out to the side. That matters because depending on what movement you're doing, the weight plate holder may get in the way of your legs or your arms being there. So it's really smart that it goes on the front or the side. Now with the design, the biggest call out I wanna give is just like the versatility. It's just so freaking versatile. You saw the movements in the beginning, like it legitimately can be used for all those movements. Now not every movement feels as good as a machine you use at a gym, and not every movement feels as good as other ones you're doing on the machine. For instance, I've seen some videos of people doing some tricep work on this. Many of the tricep work, it just, the moment arm isn't enough. It's too much of a range of motion. It just doesn't work that great. But then you use it for things like preacher curls. My goodness, it feels good. The pump is real. In addition to that, like leg extensions, ham curls, both seated ham curls and prone ham curls, like it just works extremely well. Surprisingly so actually. Like I I'm actually surprised how good it feels and how similar it feels to machines you would use at a commercial Gym. Now I wanna talk about the construction. So I gave some of my thoughts on the design, but I wanna talk about the quality of the piece overall. So generally like the too long didn't read is it, it's good quality. This is not as good as a commercial piece like the vinyl and foam. It's not the same level, but for the price point, I think it meets it perfectly. Like the welds are okay, the powder coat isn't bad. Some of the components feel very quality. Some of them feel just okay, just some examples. Some of the pop pins are aluminum pop pins that have a very nice feel, pop, just everything about it, it's just very secure. And then other ones are plastic and they screw off, you have to pop them, screw back in. Like they just don't match up. I wish they were all aluminum. Like the plastic ones, I hate plastic knobs, plastic on features that could potentially break and are used a lot, I think is just a bad choice because they could end up breaking. Another example is the plastic knobs on the pieces that secure it up against the upright. We know those are bad because we broke both of them, two of them, it's very annoying. And now you gotta basically order replacement parts. It's like something that requires a lot of torquing like those ones did. It's just annoying and something to call out. Ours broke, I foresee the company replacing them. I foresee them also fixing the issue hopefully in the future, but it is worth calling out. Then overall it's powder coated, but then there's parts of it that are actually chrome plated. I love this feature. It allows some of the attachments that are movable to move up and down on the arms without scratching them. But then you see things like the weight plate holder that are powder coated. It just doesn't make a lot of sense because there's gonna be more movement and more marring and scarring of plates on the plate holder than would be on the other arms that are chromed. I wish they would have also chromed the weight plate holder. Again, small things, but things that people like me that review things for a living notice. Now, something that I think is both a positive and negative is this thing is freaking beefy. Like if you're used to and thinking, you're gonna take this off and put it back on like a J cup, like, you're gonna be surprised because this is not really designed in that way. It is both a positive in that you can put a lot of weight on it and you're gonna need to because your full body weight is going to be sitting on the seat pad that uses a single rod to attach to it. You're gonna need a lot of steel there to keep you holding up and keep from bending it because it's only secured on one side. This isn't something that's secured on both sides. In addition to that, you're gonna have the weight of the weight arm from the plates that you're putting on it. So there's just a lot of weight that's gonna be on this. So you need it to be stout, which is nice but it's nice when it's on the rack. It becomes not so nice when you have to take it off and put it somewhere. That's when it gets kind of like, that's a trade off. So personally, I would rather have it be beefy and safer on the rack than lighter, but just understand, and this is something I'm gonna get into more later, if you're planning on taking this on and off all the time, that will probably be a workout in itself. So one part of this mechanism that adjusts because it all adjusts. I wish I would have written down all the amount of adjustments that there are, the amount of movements that you can do. If you combined all of the different things that you could do with this, you know, it's like when you go to Sonic and they say, we've got like 10,000 different drinks you can make. There's a thousand different drink combinations at Sonic. 
Well, you can kind of do that with this because there's so many different ways that you could attach things. One thing you can adjust is the carriage system. It can go up and down on the uprights and it will need to because some things you'll want to do standing on the ground, some things you'll want to be on a bench, some things you'll want to be sitting literally on the preacher pad. So you'll want to adjust it up and down often. But the carriage itself, especially when the stuff is on it, is quite heavy too. There is a handle there, but something to be aware of is you're also gonna have to adjust it up and down in the upright. It does take time and it can be heavy, and it may be too heavy for you to do with the weight on it, and it may be too heavy to do with the attachments on it. So you're gonna have to think about and plan when you're putting it on and where you're gonna position it each time you do a movement. The reality is I don't foresee, and I wouldn't recommend most people taking this on and putting it down, storing it somewhere and putting it back on each workout. Really where I think this would work is for somebody that has a dedicated squat rack or upright, they can leave it on full time. Like truly, like if you want this to be tight against the upright, you wanna put it on and be able to use it for all your movements throughout all your different workouts, I really think you're gonna to have to have it permanently fixed up against the uprights. It's a much more complex and heavy and kind of cumbersome attachment than really just about any other that's out there, which is both good because that offers all the versatility, but it's bad if you're wanting to really think of this as something that's portable and something I'll just quickly throw on my rack before the hour that I've allotted myself to work out in. I really think they need to improve, increase, and really release their video library. They've talked a little bit about some of the things they're doing for videos. They've got some stuff they're posting on Instagram, but really a place where I can see all the movements, easily go through them with gifts because there's so many things you can do with it. Like if you don't know what you're doing, like I just don't foresee people using it. So I wanna be able to quickly see all the movements and sort and filter by body part so I can see everything it can do because it can do that much. Now, one other thing with the construction I wanna mention, because you're constantly having to adjust between all the different types of movements that you're doing and with all the attachments, and there's so much adjustability, having ways to easily see where you're at so you can either write it down or replicate it each workout would be extremely beneficial. The way I think this would work is laser cut numbers on the holes. So this brings me to the value. This thing is, as of now, $800. Retail, it's $900. It's on sale from $899 to $799. It also doesn't include shipping. To us, it was about $115. So you're looking on sale at the current price, about $915 shipped to your door. That's a lot of money for a rack attachment, and that's a lot of money for home gym owners. Do I think the value is there? Yeah, I actually do. I think, I think that price point for the quality, for the versatility is actually really good. A lot of these rack attachments you look at and you're like, man, like, yeah, that's a cool monolift arm, but do I really need that? Is that really adding a ton of functionality to my rack? This is something I think you can look at and definitely justify. Like if you're using and want to do bodybuilding movements and you wanna have this in your gym, I don't really see another option to replicate this. But the only people I can really legitimately recommend it for is somebody who has the space to permanently affix this to a rack. If you're planning on using this on something, say your rep Aries, and you wanna put it on and take it off every time you use the front of your rack for your functional trainer, I just don't think that's gonna work. I just don't foresee people using it a lot in that way. I think you're literally gonna to have to have a dedicated upright or a dedicated squat rack with it sitting in. And you're gonna want a squat rack that's heavy or bolted down so it's not moving all over like crazy, which I think is an okay trade-off. Like I think this is actually worth taking up the space it would have to take in order to sit into a second squat rack. I think you can legitimately get enough work with this and use it literally every workout that both the cost and the space you'd have to take up, I do think it's worth it. So one thing you could do that this is probably what I would do if I put it in my gym is I would buy a single upright probably some from like Titan because you can buy them individually or you can buy them in pairs. So I'd buy a short, as short of a cross member as I could while also leaving enough space on the back to do the movements. And then I would bolt the cross member into the wall in both the top and the bottom. And I think that would be secure enough, also not take up a crazy amount of space, but give you enough height to use the unit all the time on the wall. So to summarize, I definitely like it. 
I think it's very versatile. I'm pumped there's another company producing things that really like, they even say this on their website, there's really nobody innovating in this space, like innovating in this specific space. And I think it's pretty true. I think what'll happen is this will cause companies to look at machines more seriously and ways you can add them to home gyms. I think it's awesome. And I also like that they brought it out the price they did. I think they could have charged way more for this and they would have still sold a bunch of them. So I like that they're coming in at the value proposition they are. Okay. That's my opinions on the isolator. Have you used one? Have you seen it online? I'm sure you've seen it if you're within the home gym space. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Do you feel like I represented it well? If you've used it, have you had any of the problems that I had with it? Was there anything else you've watched out for? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. This has been Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. I'll see you next time. Peace.